Hey everybody, welcome back to the practice video. Hey. This is our weekly video for the South Orange County Church where we take the things that God is teaching us, we try to go a little bit deeper and actually put them into practice. Yep. So hopefully you're gathering with your identity groups, your small groups, and you're able to have some great discussions about these things that we're doing. So, you know, right now we're in week three of Advent Yay. and we're heading into the topic of joy. And I want to thank uh, Ron and Lisa and the whole Richmond clan, yes. Christian and Evelyn and Andrew and everybody for being willing to share with us on Sunday. And uh, I'm really grateful for that. Now, full disclosure, we haven't heard it yet because we're recording this video last week. <laughs> so, but I believe yeah. with faith that they are going to I'm do sure a great job. Awesome. I'm sure it was awesome. It was. Uh, but I'm actually out of town. I'm starting a master's program this week in missional leadership. And I'm really, really excited about what that is going to do for our church and the things I'm going to be learning and able to apply for us and take us into the new year. So yes. super excited about all of those things. But, Me too. Um, so here we are. We're going to talk about joy. Now, we're not exactly sure what scriptures they used yesterday, so we might be talking about the same scriptures today. Uh, <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. The Bible You're is the Bible. We're going to get our thoughts on it, our two cents. That's right. So, you know, um, as we look at, actually, wait, I'm sorry. Before I get into joy, I did just want to remind everybody that what is coming up. We oh, are yeah. in the holiday season. Yes. And um, as we're looking forward, you know, Christmas Day and New Year's Day are both on Sundays. Yep. So what we have opted to do, and I'm pretty sure everybody knows this, but I just want to make sure that we're going to have our gatherings that week, or those two weeks on Friday evenings. And it'll just be the South. It won't be with the Centrals. Just the South will come together on those Friday evenings so that we can have some great special worship time together. Yeah. So the Friday night, December uh, on the 23rd, the Christmas Eve Eve service uh, will come together, hopefully candlelight kind of thing and, and a yeah. family style. Family style. Uh, so the kids will all, all the be, kids in will be in there and uh, we'll just have a great focus on Jesus and his birth and that'll be yeah. awesome. And then on December 30th, New Year's Eve Eve, uh, we'll have a potluck dinner up in the fellowship hall and everybody yeah. can bring something, we can gather, we can eat, and then we can talk even while we're eating just about uh, you know, just family and connection and all God's going to do in the new year. So check, make sure you check because the times are weird. The Christmas Eve Eve is at seven, seven. and the New Year's Eve Eve is at 630 because we're having dinner together. Right. So if you uh, be sure that you RSVP for yeah. those just so that we know, we have to know how many people, how many chairs to set up. And, you know, we just want, want to make it feel right for everybody. Yeah. So if you could RSVP uh, for us, that would be super great. And right. um, there's also invitations that you can oh, yeah. download and then you can have it on your send phone. You can send friends. it to your friends. Send them. Uh, you can email it to them, text it to them. And uh, that way everybody knows, you know, you're able to invite other people into what we're doing. Yes. So that'll be cool. It's going to be awesome. So this week we're talking about joy. Yay. And, um, you know, joy is one of those, it's such an interesting topic to get into because you know, it's one of those Christian words that it gets thrown around a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, you think about it, it's, it's number two in the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. What, what is it? Love, <laughs> joy, joy, and then you go on. So it's it's a big one, right? Um, and there's songs that we sing about it, that the, you know, most famous children's song that we sing, oh, you know, I've got yeah. the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? And um, so, you know, we sing that song, and there's other songs about joy, and, you know, we could talk about it. You see it on needlepoint, on pillows, in the Cracker Barrel. Uh, you see this word joy everywhere, yes. and but it the 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 feeling itself can at times be elusive, just like <laughs> just like everything just else, just like hope and just about. like peace. These things that we want to hold on to, they they can quickly run away. And I think and, this one's a little different because you think I should feel joy, right? Mm -hmm. And you try to shame yourself into being <laughs> joyful. Like man, I've, I've I've got so many things that are good in my life. I should be feeling joy. But you're in a sad place. Right. Maybe you're dealing with something heavy and. You know, but you kind of, you're right. You shame yourself. I should be feeling joyful. Right. So it's, it's hard to hold on to that. And uh, so we want to talk about that today and maybe look at joy uh, a, a little bit differently mm -hmm. and then um, uh, give us some practical things that will help us to grow in our joy and be able to return to joy a little bit more or a little bit easier. And then also talk about how this can really become a great characteristic of our small groups yes. and the, the, the communities that we have. Exactly. A joy is a really interesting thing because over the past 10 years, it's become sort of a catchphrase for the medical community and the, and the mental health community. And they've been studying the effects of joy on recovery. One of my favorite authors is Jim Wilder and he's a neurotheologist 
theologian, mm -hmm. which may, basically means he studies the brain and as it pertains to God and how our brains were created to help us have a relationship with God. And he's written many books. Some of you have read The Joyful Journey. Yep. He helped co-author that book. And there's many other books that he's read. I mean, that he's written that I've read. <laughs> um, but I wanted to share with you this one instance where he had been running a clinic and this clinic was sort of the place where people would send their toughest cases. Right. So churches that had kind of given up on these patients, um, they would come to his clinic. And I wanted you to just read this one paragraph from here. It said, previously, the clinic would need to hospitalize a large percentage of these patients during their treatment. Their counseling sessions would send them into such deep trauma that they could no longer function. Jim and the other therapists had come to accept that hospitalization was a normal part of recovery. Once the clinic started focusing on building patients' joy before treating their trauma, hospitalization rates plummeted to almost zero. And I thought that is, that's really quite amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I had been reading lately another book by a, a doctor who has absolutely nothing to do with God. I mean, mm -hmm. this guy's a theologian. This other author was talking about the really joy. And he was talking about this thing called pendulation, where it is when you're trying to help somebody heal from some traumatic event in their life, you can go into that event and you can help them to go back to that event. So the pendulum swings over here and they're trying to remember this very traumatic event, right? But you can only stay there for a little bit, let's say a minute or two. And then you have to pull them back to the other side where you can have some experience of joy right. come in. Right. to relieve the stress of that painful situation. And then once the joy has been restored and they've been returned to joy, then you can go back into, so the pendulum goes back and forth. So you go back into the traumatic event, you think, you know, you sort of experience that for a little bit, but you pull yourself back up from the, with the joy and it goes right. back and forth. And each time you go back into the trauma, it actually lessens the pain. It right. feels lessened. Right by the joy that you just experienced. Right. Even the Mind Change Institute, which isn't something that a lot of disciples have, have been into, it's that same kind of thing where you go into a past memory and you're feeling it, you're dealing with it, something that has brought you pain, but then you come back out to experience something of joy, a, a TikTok, this is what I would always use, a TikTok video of yeah. puppies, you know, right. something that restores your joy. Right. But the, the medical community is now catching up because I started thinking, as I was reading all these things, I was like, I have heard this before. Right. Where have I heard this before? Oh yes, the Bible. Right, <laughs> it's in there. It's so, in the Bible. You know, we were, we were talking about the, the passage, uh, this iconic passage, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. And, you know, I mean, we, you see it, it's, you know, everywhere, but we, we have, the, where does it come from? And, and, you know, if you're trying to find it, you would go, it's probably in the Psalms. That's what we, that's what I did. I right. was like, where's that? Oh, it's the Psalm. I'm it's sure got to be the in the Psalms, but it's actually not. It's in Nehemiah, which is really interesting because, you know, we've been studying, you know, uh, the, this last year, um, the Israelites going into exile and coming out of exile. And so when Ezra and Nehemiah bring the remnant back to Jerusalem after exile, after the 70 years, and they're trying to you know, repair the wall, rebuild the temple, rebuild their community. At one point, Ezra is, he's reading them the book of the law and he's, teach, he's reminding them of the covenant that God had offered to his people and the ways that God kept the covenant and then the ways that the Israelites were unfaithful. And, and they, were, they were standing there just brokenhearted, mm -hmm. weeping and yeah, cut to the heart yeah. grieving at, at what had happened. And it was starting to become overwhelming for them in that moment. And then right then in chapter eight of Nehemiah, Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so here's Nehemiah when the people are, we are you know remorseful, um, just cut to the heart. And, and unsure, about, about to be overwhelmed by their grief. And he calls them back to, he said, here's the strength that I want you to lean on to be able to make it through this moment. And the strength, the thing that is going to be your strength that will help you through with it is the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so it's getting back to this moment of being a, a, able to understand, okay, what is that joy and how do I get there? We even see this in the New Testament in, in uh, the Hebrews chapter 12, this very famous passage there. That's talking about Jesus um, and how we're gonna, you know, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And then it says this about Jesus: It says, "For the joy set before Him, 
he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was able to endure the cross because he was able to return to joy. Yes. When Jesus was feeling overwhelmed with pain and sorrow and grief and betrayal, he was able to come back to the joy of the Lord. Now, was he feeling fired up in that moment? No, but it was this understanding that there, there is a great sense of joy here that will enable him to kind of pull his way through it. Exactly. You know, they talk about joy not being an emotion. Actually, right. I'd never heard this before, but they call it a supra emotion. Yeah. It's it's something that uh, an emotion that can come on top of another emotion. Right. So. So it's not existing side by side. It's not like replace it. You don't no, it go doesn't replace this it. or this. No, it's that you can feel two at things the at the same time, right? right? So you could be sad. We see this when someone, a loved one dies, right? What do we do? We gather together mm -hmm. with those, with that person and we tell stories and we eat food and we sit with them. And it is this relational thing so that even though they don't, it's not like they don't feel sad anymore. Right. Of course, we still feel sad, but we feel joy also. Right. We still feel fear, but we feel joy also. It, right. it, it goes on top of the emotion that we already feel. That's why the community right. of God is so important. Right. Because joy is found in relationships. In fact, some people will say that there is no healing outside of relationship. Right, outside of community. Out, outside of community. Yeah. So that, that's why we have to have this community so that when we have our own trials, our own things that we're going through, but then we walk into a gathering with mm -hmm. our small group and they're all happy to see us. Right. They're glad that we're there. I'm so right. glad that you're here. It's being able to feel joy at mm -hmm. the same time of whatever we're going through. Right. You know, in that book, The Joyful Journey, there's a, a, a way to pray. It's called thought rhyming. And there's and you, you listen for the ways that God is speaking to you about certain things. And one of the topics is where, you know, the prompt in a sense, like remember you do prompts on essays, but the prompt is God saying, I'm glad to be with you. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm writing about the challenges I'm facing or the fears that I'm going through, I get to that moment and I'm like, God is saying, I'm glad to be with you. And then I listen for what the Spirit is saying and it's going on. God's saying, I'm proud of you. Yeah. I enjoy watching you try to work these things out. You're doing, uh, you're doing great. I hear that you're, all the time. You're going to make it, you know. Good. And and so when I, I feel that in my relationship with God, I feel this is what he's saying to me. It does help me. That's what brings me that joy yeah. and enables me to deal with the fear and the challenges and the, the, the frustrations. This is so important with our small groups that we build this type of community and this type of intentionality um, in our relationships, in our small groups. You know, uh, when we have family camp every year, you know, everybody, we get together in the big room and everyone's set up playing their games. And then people have been driving up the mountain for three hours and they're car sick and somebody's thrown up and they're all mad and angry and, you know, the and they, they, they get there and they come walking in the big room and I try to train everybody. We, when somebody new walks in, everybody stops and we look at them and we cheer. Yay! You made it! They're here! <laughs> the the Hershes are here! <laughs> the Hershes are here! Yeah. Woo! You know, I mean, you get excited about that because people need that. Yeah. When we are for our teen midweeks this last year, we tried to train the teens to do it. It didn't go so no, well, no, but we did but, it. <laughs> but we were working on it. You know, Ryan's here. Woo! You know, we're all excited. Try to be excited because that makes a difference. When you yeah. walk into a room and somebody's eyes light up because you're there, it's exactly. like, oh, that's great. We we, we had our uh, L.A. church staff Christmas party last weekend, and and you know, I don't know how many hundreds of people are there, but you know, you walk into the room and it's like everyone's in conversations and they're having all this great, and I, it made such a difference when somebody was like. Jay, you're here. Exactly. I was like, oh, you know, I mean, I just kind of like, okay. I'm seen. I'm seen. I'm heard. Yeah. I, someone cares about me. Right. That's what we're saying every single time we get together. Right. And sometimes we can get so caught up in what it took to get there. Right. That all we can think about is us when right. we're walking in. Right. You know, but to hear somebody glad to see us. Right. So one of the exercises um, that, that Jim Wilder kind of takes people through when he's helping them figure out how to return to joy is being able to identify and write down joyful experiences that happen. Something that, that is a, just a memory in your mind where everything is right. And so you write it down, you remember it, you think about what it, what it felt like, what the weather was like, what you could smell, maybe what, uh, what you could hear, if you could hear the wind blowing or different things like that. And when you have those moments, it enables you to remember that feeling of joy and yes. you tap back into the joy of the Lord. 
It's these moments where God is giving you a glimpse into like heaven. This is this is what heaven is going to be like, right? Yeah. And so you can touch that piece of heaven and find that moment of joy. And um, so he has people write it down in their journals and be, then be able to spend time meditating on it. You've done this a lot, right? Yeah, I have done so this So talk a lot. about that. that so last basically one. I have a journal and it's specifically for this where I, I, I reserve only the best events where I really can feel God's presence and his approval. Yeah. And so I write those things down when they happen. I give it a title. And then so when I am in the position in life where I need to return to joy, let's say I've had a really difficult meeting or I'm having a difficult time with my, with my daughter or my son or something what, something's hard, I've just lost my joy. In order to return to joy, I can take one of those incidences and I can sit and meditate on it. Just like you said, what did it feel like? What was the temperature in the room? Um, what do you smell? What do you see? What were you wearing? Anything that can get you back into that situation and just meditate on it really as long as you can, but strike, start with a minute. Mm -hmm. just meditating for one minute on that that joyful experience and it will return you to joy I mean right. some people say that the sign of maturity is being able to return to joy throughout uh, you know when when trials or when trials are there is not what um, right. acts really funny because that's what James says consider it yeah. your joy when you encounter all kinds of trials trials right so um, you know it but that is a that is a sign of maturity when we're mm -hmm. able to go through hard things, but then return ourselves to joy. And this is a practice that you can use to get you there. I actually have been practicing this, so I can probably meditate on one right. for five minutes. Yeah. But he suggests, you know, writing down five or six of them so that you can just continually go from one joyful experience to another to another and until you feel that joy again. Share about your latest one. Oh, my latest one. Yeah. I love this story. Okay, so this is my latest one. Is I recently, I got to do singing with the kids. It's one of my favorite things to do. So while everybody's having big church, mm -hmm. so we got, I get to go into OC Kids and do the singing with them. And so we had just been having a really good time and singing, singing, singing. And then at the end, they're all standing up and I'm getting ready to leave. And Jolene, mm -hmm. the little, cutest little thing in the world, she runs up. She goes, I love you. <laughs> Just like total overflow out of her heart. I love you. And I was like, I love you too. You know, <laughs> we're hugging and all the little girls are coming around. There's this big group hug me and all these little teeny beautiful children. And it was just, it filled my soul so much that now I can just think of it and it changes my disposition. Yeah. It yeah. returns me to joy. So whatever I'm feeling doesn't go away. Right. It's just that joy comes with it. Right. Joy right. comes on top. Right. It comes yeah. alongside. It comes alongside. So here's what we want you to be able to do in your groups tonight is take five minutes and just sit and, and think about at least one of these joyful experiences in your life. When was a moment where you felt like this is good and God oh is God. giving me that yes, glimpse, exactly. right? And, and write that down and then share it yeah. with the group That'd and so have everybody be able to share. These are the moments that I remember and, and this is the moment that will help me return to joy. Yeah. And then as we go throughout, you know, just imagine um, how our groups can continue to change and help people. If every time we walked in, we're like, I'm so glad that you were here. Yeah. That, that that becomes a natural part of the way that we greet one another. You know, we have habits and traditions within our church. What if this became a new one? That yeah. every time somebody walked in, we're like, I'm so glad Yay. that you were here. Yeah. And it was sincere and we, and we could feel that. What that would do for the joy level throughout our whole church. Yeah. So I hope this helps you and uh, just I'm excited to continue to focus on joy for this third week of Advent. Uh, we will see you on Sunday as we get into the topic of love. And then we head into the holidays, which will be Yay. awesome. So we love you guys very much, and we'll see you soon.